Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of good food, a lot of just good times, good food, good people. You know, the three best things. Um, but let's get into the word. Uh, yeah, let's get into the word. Romans chapter 5. We're going to read and learn from the same passage we read last week that we got into last week. Um, I felt like there was not enough time last week uh, because we had the mustard seed event and Hallelujah Night and everything going on. Uh, I tried to go a little fast, um, but I wanted to slow, slow it down today and uh, look at another side. Look at more of what's in this text, what's in the Word of God, what is made available to us. What is revealed here, I want to catch as much as we can. And so last week, you know, I got, I got into a lot about how through Adam, through Adam's sin, there is sin in you and I. There is death in you and I. We as human beings are sinners. That is the truth. We as human beings are very, very capable of, of, of insane amounts of evil. And, you know, like, you're not better than anybody, okay? I just want to start with that as we review from last week. You're not better than any evil person. You're not better than Hitler or Joseph Stalin or Mao Zedong. You're not better than the worst kinds of people. Actually, when we look at certain people who are very evil and who have done many evil deeds... You have to know that you are capable of doing the same thing. But you have that same capability because there is death. There is sin in you through Adam. But through the one man, Jesus Christ, there is life. There is the gospel in you. There is God in you. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to get more into that. All right? So last week we took... We took care of the death in you. Today I want to talk about more of the solution. How do we, how do we notice that, you know, in, in each of us individually and personally, how do we notice those sins and those things of death, those things that, you know, came from the original sin of Adam, like, and that is now in you. Like, how do we catch those things and then replace it with the things of God? Because that's possible, man. That's what Jesus died for. Jesus died so that you might be righteous. So that you might be holy and blameless before God. And yes, that is true. But we also need to walk in it. You know? It's like salvation. You have, if you confess with all of your heart and with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you repent of your life, you repent of your own self, and you repent because remember, without Christ, all you have, all you have in you is death and sin. You repent of that, and when you get into Christ, you are saved. You have salvation, but it doesn't just mean, oh yeah, I have salvation now. I do nothing. I just wait till I go to heaven. No, in that salvation, there is discipleship. In that salvation, there is a way of life you are saved into. You're not just saved out of sin, you're saved into righteousness and holiness and into the ways of God. Can I get an amen? amen? And the Christian life, Christian salvation is about learning how to walk in that salvation. Scripture says, practice your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation is not just a, a state, but salvation is a, it's a practice, it's a way of life. The Christ life. And that, what a gift. That gift has been fully, the fullness of it, the glory of Jesus, the fullness has been given to you. And we're going to read about that, okay? Chapter 5, verse 12, we're going to read to verse 21. Okay? So when you are there, please stand. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, we're going to read to verse 21. 
All right. I will read the evens, and you can read the odds. Here we go. Oh, we're waiting for one more. So. All right. We're ready to go. Starting verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over whose, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if out of the trespasses of one man, death reigned in that one man, how much more will those who receive the gods and those who believe in the grace and 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 the grace Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Man, that is the word of the Lord. Please be to God. You may have a seat. Man, the free gift. If you guys didn't notice, the words, the phrase, the free gift of God was repeated, I think, five times in that text, which is a lot. And the Bible repeats stuff so that we, you could pay attention. It's basically um, telling the reader, hey, pay attention to this. This is very important. You know, and the free gift... The free gift of God is Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift of God. Jesus was given to us. The man, the one man Jesus, was given to us so that we can be made righteous, so that we can be saved from our sins, so that we can be forgiven, so that we could be in or with God, in relationship with God. That all of that is available. Everything about God and everything that God has is available to us through Jesus Christ. What an amazing thing. Because before Jesus, we had nothing going for us. All we had was death. We had no gifts. We had no um, good thing. We were not that good. All we had, it was all bad before Jesus. And by the way, if, until you come to that point, you, you can never really truly come to faith in Jesus. If you just come to Jesus and be like, well, I'm not that bad, but you can help me just, you know, get rid of just a little bit of bad I have and make me good, you know, uh, completely good. Uh, please do that for me. You can't really uh, come to faith like that. You know, the Bible teaches that unless you repent completely, like, you have to completely realize that you are dead in your trespasses. And until you come and approach Jesus in that way and say, God, everything that I have, everything that I've made of my life is ruined. I, all I have created for myself is death. All I have in me is sin. I have no goodness in me. But you, that's why I need you. And Jesus gives himself to you. Jesus is goodness. Jesus is life. Jesus is righteousness. Jesus is holiness. Jesus is everything of God. And what happens is Jesus puts himself into you. By dying on the cross, he sheds blood to give you himself and to have his life and who he is, Christ, to be in you. Let's marvel at that. Let, that. let that sink in. We have a great gift from God. God really loves us. We 
can tell God really loves us because, you know, God gave us everything he had, he had when we were at our worst. God didn't love us and send Jesus to die for us when we were, you know, starting to get our, get our stuff together. He said, oh, they're showing me some progress. All right. They deserve my son Jesus. No, it's when we were at our worst. It's like, oh, um, I see what's happening here. But I love them. I want to save them. I want to forgive them. I want to, I want to set them free. I don't want to, I don't want to keep, I don't want to watch them keep going in the way that they're going. I want, to, I want to teach them another way. I want to save them from their sin and their death to my righteousness and my life. That's the love of God. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus volunteered to come down from heaven and change, change himself to become a man and die on the cross because he loves you that much. You know, when we think about the free gift of Jesus Christ, a lot of times what happens is it's like, oh, it's free. And so all I need to do is just, you know, get this free gift and everything's good and I feel better about myself. It's like, it's like we could almost use God and take advantage of the gift that he has given to us. You know, it's like, oh, I feel really guilty right now. So Jesus, I want, to, I want the gift, I want the free gift of grace from Jesus so I could feel better about myself. So I could feel less guilty, less shameful. But that's a very uh, shallow way to look at it. Okay? Um, you have to understand that the gift of God is free. You get it for free. Meaning your relationship with Jesus, covenant relationship with Jesus, it's free to you. But it costs God everything. Look at your neighbor on the right and say, it's free. And then look at your neighbor on your left and say, but it's really not that free. <laughs> and then look at me and say, because it costs God everything. You have to understand, God gave everything he had. For him to give up Jesus was everything. And for God to give everything he had, it was a great loss. It was a great sacrifice that God made to love us and save us. And for us, it's free. We don't pay. You know, we talked about this. You don't earn your way to God. God gives himself to you. God has made a way to you. You don't find God. God finds you. It's not about how much you love God. It's about how much God loves you. And now I get to respond to the grace of God and love him too. It costs God a lot. And how you treat that matters. How you receive and treat the free gift of Jesus Christ tells a lot about yourself. Now, if you take advantage of the grace of God, you know, that tells a lot about, you know, about yourself. It says a lot about you. Maybe you might not be saved. Maybe you might not have true faith in Jesus Christ. If it's always just, oh, I sinned, I feel bad, so Jesus forgive me, and then, okay, Jesus forgives me, Jesus loves me, and then go back to the same sin and feel bad, oh, Jesus, please forgive me, I feel really guilty right now, please make this feeling go away, okay, I feel good now, and then go back to the same sin, and then it's like, oh, and then you... In that pattern, you should be realizing, oh, something's not right here. I think the way I'm treating this grace of God 
is very questionable. Maybe I'm taking advantage, you know. And that's a very scary thing to take advantage, to take advantage of God. You just, you just need to think about that. But Jesus, what he wants to do is he wants to accomplish his, he wants to put his life, his righteousness in you. But in order for you to do that, in order for that to take place in your own life, you need to have an exchange. So, like we talked about last week, you see the death that you are causing. You see the sin and the death in you. Your helpless state, your lostness, your depravity. You see it in you. And then it's not just for you to, you know, Jesus made a way. So it's not for you to just, you know, just wallow in your sin and be like, oh, I feel so bad about my sin. Oh, I'm such a bad person. And, you know, oh, you know, I'm so shameful. I'm so, I suck. It's not for that. It's, you take that and you go to the throne of Jesus. Or you, let me say it like this. You go to the cross. You go to the cross of Jesus and you make an exchange. God, I see this. I see the sin. I realize now that I have sin in me. But you have called me for something greater. You have called me to be a son and a daughter of, a daughter of God. So I'm going to stop living like an enemy of God. And I'm going to start living like a son or a daughter of God. And so I'm going to take this out, this sin in me. And I'm going to lay it down, lay it down at the foot of the cross. And Jesus, I want you to put your ways, to put your righteousness, to put your holiness in me. That's what's going on here. Now, let me give you an example in my own personal life. Okay. I remember when I came to faith in Jesus Christ, when I recommitted my life to Jesus, Jesus loves you so much that he will point out. Those things that need to be taken care of. Those things that need to be exchanged. The sin. The sin in you. He will point it out. Not to shame you or to accuse you. But he will point it out to say, I will teach you a better way. But you, it's up to me to make the exchange, right? So when I was in Hawaii, in Kona, I recommitted my life to Jesus. And Jesus began to really work in my life and I remember I remember I was uh, drinking coffee and hanging out with some friends at a cafe right on the on the base there the missionary base and I remember I saw this great man of God come in he was the leader who started this whole organization called YWAM he walked in through the door and my friend who I was drinking coffee with was like dude this is Lauren Cunningham James it's him it's the guy he started this whole thing, you know, like, you know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. Like, dude, he's such a great man of God, you know, and like, wow, he's in the same room as us. You know, he was kind of starstruck. And then I remember I looked at my friend and I was like, so he's not Jesus. And I remember in my heart, in my mind. I was thinking, I'm going to be better than that guy. I'm going to serve God in a greater way. I'm going to do greater things for God than him. And there was that pride. You know, you guys ever felt that? That little pride. That, you know, that, that pride. It's like, oh, I'm better than you. And I'm going to be better than you. And I felt that it was that ugliness in me. And I saw it. The Holy Spirit began to show me. And it broke my heart because I saw it. I was like, it, it was crazy because it's like, oh, I'm going to be better than you. Oh, no. It's like Smeagol and uh, Golem. It's like, my precious, kill him. And then he turns into Smeagol. Oh, why am I saying that? Like, that's what it was like for me. It's like, ah, oh, oh, I'm going to be better than you. Yeah. And then, and then it's like, oh, no, why am I saying that? Oh. I want to, I want Jesus, you know. And I just began to see that state in me. And I was like, God, and I began to pray. I was like, God, I see this ugliness in me. I don't want it, though. Like, thank you for showing me, God. 
But I, I don't want that. I, I want Jesus. I don't want sin and death in me. I want Jesus in me. So I began to make that exchange. To say, God, here, here is my sin. Here is my way. I want your way. Here's my pride. I want your humility. I don't know how to do it. So teach me. Put your ways inside me. Put your life inside me. Let me live the life that, that you live. That you're teaching me how to live. And so that journey began. I mean, this stuff doesn't happen overnight, okay? Like, you don't take care of, you know, a whole, uh, you know, uh, the whole problem of sin and a whole life of sin before Jesus. You don't take care of that in one day. It takes, it's a lifelong journey, all right? And that's, it's, that's discipleship. Discipleship is, you know, um, for life, you know? And... You know, but I started to start that journey of exchanging my sin for Jesus' righteousness. And it's like, God, I, I want Jesus. I just don't know how to get Jesus. And I'm giving him my sin. And years and years, this, I started to see this, you know, I, I started to see the ugliness even more. You know, when I came back home and, you know, like I would see other pastors who were like great pastors. And there would be like jealousy. You know, like, I would see young pastors my age who are like, you know, like, their youth group is big or, you know, they're like having a lot of influence and they're like super gifted and everybody's listening to them. And I start to see the jealousy. I start to see that pride again. Like, ah, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to be better than you. Oh. And then it's like, I will go back into Smeagol mode. Like, oh, no, why am I saying that? I shouldn't be saying it. Lord, help me. You know, and then it's like, I start to see that again and again. And it, but I kept taking care of it. I kept exchanging. I was relentless in that. I was like, God, no, I will not have pride. God, I will not have jealousy. I will not have envy. I'm laying it down at the foot of the cross. And I will have you. Amen. Amen. And after years of doing that, my heart was trained. To stop living from the death that was created through Adam. But start living in the life that was created through Jesus Christ. To, to start walking in that. To start walking in salvation. To start walking in what God has provided for me. To start walking in the free gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And we talked about this. Eternal life doesn't start after you die. Eternal life is talking about a kind of life. That starts right now. It's the Jesus life. Holy life. You could translate eternal life to holy life. <clears throat> A life that is in step with Jesus. And I want to I wanna encourage all of you today. Today I, I just really want to focus on encouragement. You know, I want to encourage all of you. There's so much possibility for you in Christ. It's just crazy. Right? We talked about the possibilities, you know, and the capabilities you have in your sin to create death and to, to you know, to how evil you could become. But when you, that's through Adam's sin. That's through the sin of one man. But by the righteousness and the sinlessness of one man through Jesus Christ. There is great possibility for holiness. There is great capability for godliness. There's great hope. Scripture says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when, when Christ is in you, glory, there's so much glory to get into. There, it's a glorious hope with glorious possibilities. You could be such an amazing woman of God. I'm talking to you because all the women are here. Like, just look at me. Do you know, like, how great of a woman of God you could become? I mean, God has already, you know, provided Jesus Christ so that you could become a daughter of God. But you know how, you know the possibilities of that? 
like how much you could grow, how much you could mature, how much you could learn, and how much, you know, how much, man, I see it. That's what gets me going as a pastor, because I look at you and I just see it. I see, man, oh, Jesus, do it, Jesus. Do it in that, do it in this young lady here. May they grow strong. May they, may they grow in with great authority. Authority to have power over sin with Jesus. And to stand for godliness and holiness. Amazing. And men, I want to talk to you. Do you know the possibility? You know how great of a man of God we can become? Kevin, I tell you this all the time. I told Kevin and Jerry yesterday, dude, Kevin, the only reason, the really, like, the really main reason why I wanted you to live with me is because I see you and I see how great of a man you can be. And I just want to try to take you there. I just want to try to, just, I just want to be a part of what God is doing in your life or what he can do in your life. And young men, I'm telling you, there's so much. There's so much hope for you. There's so much of the life of God that you could walk into. Man, I'm telling you, being a man of God is, it's, it's what the world needs, man. A man, a real man of God. That's, that's what the world needs, dude. You could be a part of it, just be a part of what God is doing. But everybody, young women, young men, both, please listen to me. The way that happens is that you take, the way you take care of what was in you through Adam and taking that out, putting it on the foot of the cross to receive the free gift of Jesus and walking into it, walking in it, walking in what God has made available to you. You guys doing okay? We're almost done, all right? Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Everybody say that. Everybody say grace abounded all the more. Grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign. That's a good poetic way of saying it. Through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That grace, that Jesus' grace might reign in you, might rule in you. You know, when you guys start walking in this, and you start walking with Jesus, you will soon begin to realize, like, man, like, grace is not just something that's excusing of me, excusing me of my sins, or, you know, um, getting me out of the wrath of God or the push, punishment of God. Grace, grace is the power of God in my life to become all that God has created me to be. Like you start understanding a new definition of grace. Grace is no longer a get, it, get out of jail free card. Grace is powerful. Grace becomes powerful to you. Grace starts becoming a ruling, a ruling, reigning grace. A ruling, reigning power in you. And you start to notice that, and I really want that for you. Man, I'm telling you, there's nothing like realizing as you live in the Jesus life that grace is something that rules over your life. Grace is something that influences your life. Grace is something that is leading you and guiding you. Grace is, grace is so much more than what I thought. Oh, 
Grace is not just, it's not just forgiveness of sins, but it's to do righteousness. Wow. And I started realizing this too. Like, I realized like grace is not only um, forgiveness of sins, but I started to see grace is the glory of God. Grace is God's glory on my life. Wow. That God's glory would be in me. That Jesus' glory, who Jesus is, would be in me. That's grace. That is amazing grace. That's unfathomable grace. That Jesus' glory, who Jesus is, the fullness of him, would be in me, would be in you. No, my prayer for you is that um, as you live life and as you walk in discipleship and um, you exchange, you know, your sin for the ways of Christ and you start uh, seeing grace as something, you know, as something to be prized, as something that is ruling over your life, my prayer for you is that that Christ would be in you, that it would be real, that you would be truly a Jesus people, marked by Jesus, you know, witnesses that people would see you and they'll see Jesus. That's what God wants. That's how God is going to bless the world, through his people. God is not invisible. You can see God. Just look at his children. Look at his people. You start to look like God. You start to look like Jesus. The image of Jesus, the glory of Jesus is just shining in and through you. Flowing in and through you. It's like the world sees you and, you know, um, it gives other people hope. It's like, wow. Like, you know, the world is not that bad. There's hope for the world. And I see it right here in this young lady's face. I see it here in this young man's face. You know, there's that thing, you know, a lot of older people, you know, they say things like, oh, you know, um, young people, man, Gen Z people, oh, they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're up to no good, and they're gonna. In the their future looks very, very dim, you know. But man, what if, what would happen if a group of young people would be so filled with Christ that grace would be so rich and lavish in them that they're walking in it, and, and people would look at you, like a group of young people like you, and be like, "Man, um, I was wrong." Young people are going to be incredible. This generation is going to be the most godliest, the most um, God-fearing, the most God-loving and devoted generation that we have ever seen. I pray for you. And that's, that's possible. And uh, I pray that you would all show the world you know, that you would all witness it in yourselves first like oh my gosh Jesus is in me you know that's a good question to ask every day is Christ living in me true how is Christ living in me Just and then you would witness it wow Jesus you are truly doing a great work in my life you're changing me you're transforming me you're, you're doing so much in me. And you witness it in yourself. And then as you witness it in yourself, I pray that the world around you, your friends, and the people at school, your own family, the people closest to you, they would look at you and be like, wow, um, I love, I love what God is doing in you. God is, God is so good. There's so much, there's so much hope. There's so much good in the world.
because because of you. Like, wow. No. There's good people in here. There's people, there's Christians who are godly in the world. Thanks be to God. That they would praise God and give glory to him. Can I get an amen? amen. Let's close. God, I thank you, Jesus, for your word, Lord. I pray that um, for the young people in here, Lord, that they would be so quick, God, to notice what is outside, what is outside of the way of Christ. That they'd be so quick to notice it in them. God, that they would have the ability by your grace to step out of sin and to take out sin from their lives. To lay it down at the foot of the cross and to gain Christ. To gain Jesus more and more in their lives. That Christ would be infilling and be so evident and be so uh, at rest in them. That they would grow in Christ. Jesus. Pray that the grace of Christ would reign. That it would rule over their lives. That it would rule their minds and their hearts. That they would notice that. That they would see that happening more and more. And I pray that as your grace reigns in them, that other people in the world would see the grace of God. That they would see, wow, truly, truly, God is real. God is good. And God loves us. And so, God, I pray that that would happen, Lord. Bless these young people as they go throughout the week. May they walk with you. May they go with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Amen guys.